What John wants to find are artifacts that have gone through a very specific process. They must be heated to over 1,076 degrees Fahrenheit, then rapidly cooled. This process locks in the strength of the magnetic field at that particular point in time and location. This is exactly the same type of information that is being recorded at a magnetic observatory. It's just like this is a spot reading of the magnetic field back in time. And we just need to find enough of these to string them together to get a magnetic uh, history. But where do you find rocks amongst this vast South African wilderness that have been heated in this very specific way? This is where John's archaeologists are key. Tom Huffman has dated the regular movements of human populations here across thousands of years. This is a special place for uh, Iron Age studies. That's the last 2,000 years. It's black prehistory. This is a special place because we can do what's called landscape archaeology. We have data from tree rings. We have data from the isotopic study of bones that we know that the climate has gone up and down. The climate alternated between not so good, really good, not so good, etc. And it so happens that there's a correlation between the increase in population by the number of sites of that time period with the higher rainfall periods and so on. One of the tribes that migrated to this region regularly, called the Bantu, had some interesting cultural practices that offer John a unique resource for his study. The Bantu were the first people practicing agriculture in this area. So they, of course, were very reliant on rainfall. And at the times of low uh, rainfall, times of drought, they had ritualistic burnings of the village. By burning their settlements during a drought, the Bantu believed this would call on the rain gods and bring better weather. These regular burnings have left a series of rock samples providing a historical timeline. The fact that there were several migrations of Bantu into this area is ideal, together with this ritualistic burning, because that actually created this time sequence. Today, John and his team have found a new undisturbed area of burning, something that could give him crucial insight into what's driving the anomaly beneath Africa. First, John takes GPS readings to locate the precise position of the ancient sample. The key thing now. Nice place here. Where we can get a... He then draws a line on the rock to provide a reference. Using compass readings, he specifically orientates the current magnetic field. Before taking the sample back to the lab to analyze its historic magnetic strength. 